Bring him on. Where is he? Come on, baby. Derek Family. has been held oh. soundproof booth <laughs> on stage. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Hi. Kidnapped. I'm Derek. Kidnapped. Hi. Hi, Steve. So we gathered. Hi, Derek. Hi, Hi Derek. I'm Steve. Hi there. Yeah, this is so cool. You are my most favorite band in the world. <laughs> and I love you all so much. This is just so neat to be here. You have a great <laughs> accent. Sit down. That's okay. your seat. That's your seat. My seat, okay. You're a brave man to do this, Derek. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me, I made a, a poster for you. I remember the yeah, poster. Yeah, I remember the poster. Because I talked to you, yeah. We quite like that poster, it's really it's well cool. done. We dropped it off actually just last week in Madison in the studio, so it's going to be up there for everyone oh, really? to see. I felt kind of dumb, you know, hanging outside with this big poster behind me. Everyone thought I was, you know, an obsessed fan and all that. <laughs> I was like, I am, so what? <laughs> um, well, I'm going to ask you all some questions that I've saved up for a long time. Are they clean? Um, yeah. Sure. You may proceed. Thank you. I think your music, the lyrics convey a great, you know, they're meaningful, they mean a lot to, to people. Do these come from, you know, personal experiences, lessons that you've learned, the song lyrics? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time we try and keep the words as uh, sort of ambiguous as possible so that, that it's not too specific. Pretend you're anything, just to be adored. So that the listener can interpret them the way they, they want to. I tend to to mix and match experiences and wind them up in the one song. So it's not necessarily about some one specific incident. It's just an overall view. Stupid girl. Stupid girl. I feel like I can greatly identify with your lyrics. Uh, when I hear them, they motivate me. When I was uh, younger, probably about four or five years ago, I was really down about myself, down about my life. I, I hated everything, I didn't like anything, I didn't enjoy anything. I'm only happy when it rains. I think that your music kind of gave me the, the guide to start living again. I mean, it, it sort of taught me to cope with things, accept myself, you know, love myself for who I am. See, I'll start throwing myself on this <laughs> table and start to weep. <laughs> I mean, I think we all feel like that. All the people, the bands that we fell in love with did the same for us. So mm -hmm. I think that's the great thing about that's music. Great. Very well put. And, and, uh, thank you very much. It helped that's me a lot. And I would like it's to really nice to hear. Yeah. Whose idea was it to name the second CD version 2.0? Um, we, we got a big board up in the studio and we used to mark down everybody's ideas. And then eventually, Billy Bush, our engineer, in a moment of desperation, shoved up the word version 2.0 because he was aware of how much we relied on computers in the recording process etc etc and everyone put ticks beside it so it got four ticks so <laughs> it got used. Do you think that your third one will be called version 3.0 or will it be a totally different type of name? You'll have to ask Billy. <laughs> <laughs> when not performing in concert or uh, recording your music what do you all do for fun? What do you like to do? Um, for me for fun I sleep. Now, that's so sad I know I need to get a life but um, I don't know, we're all big movie fans, we go to movies a lot, read books, um, but we're not sporty, athletic, successful types, you know. We don't go out there and, you know, whip people's asses on the football team. The queerest of the poker. We played, we played poker on the bus. That's our new passion, poker, on the, on the long bus trips. Have you had any weird odd jobs in the past that led up to this? <laughs> oh yeah. Short, short order fry cook. I worked in a, a mental institution for a while as an orderly, and I drove taxi for a while. To him. But they were all character builders. Really? How about you, Steve? What have you done in the past? Mostly uh, mowing lawns yeah. over and over. I've done that. That's no fun. <laughs> well, Push It was an excellent video, and I mean, it got eight nominations. It was great. I was really proud of y'all for, <laughs> you know, just getting, getting all of that. Yeah, well, we were really happy about that, and, and we really uh, were glad for the director. Andrea Giacobbe, because uh, he really deserved it. He put a lot of work into it, and it really is a brilliant video. While you all are touring with three guys and one girl, does the scene ever turn dramatic? Do you ever fight? You know, any crazy things happen? There's a few gender issues, but they're very slight. There is the toilet problem, which is... They won't let me look at their willies when they're peeing. That, that, that's, that's not allowed. That's fair enough, don't <laughs> so you think? So I feel very left out. And do you, do you let them see you? 
Um, I don't think they'd want to see me, but I wouldn't really mind because you can't see anything of ladies, you know, nether regions when they're crouched down. <laughs> <laughs> but you can look if you want. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, with fans and groupies, what is your uh, least favorite thing about fans and groupies? Or what do you like about them and what do you dislike? I hate it when groupies only want to sleep with them and they don't want to sleep with me. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing about our fans that we find problematic really. They're all very cool, really respectful. 40 years from now, what characteristics and, and details do you want garbage to be remembered for? Ooh, I don't know. I, I don't think in terms of being remembered, I think in, his, in a historical sense, I think that's very much a male obsession about what's my mark in history. I don't give a damn. Heaven knows what a girl can do. Heaven knows what you've got to prove. Or for me, this is for the moment. And, you know, if everyone forgets about me tomorrow, I don't think I'll really be that worried about it. Well, I will never forget about you. I'm gonna remember, <laughs> I will remember you 40 years from now and longer. This has been a great opportunity to get to interview you. Uh, I can't emphasize how much you know I love your music. It's opened me up to music. I didn't used to care about music at all until I started hearing you, and now it's all I can think about is music. And, uh, Right on. It's fantastic. Well, that's great. If you flew all the way here to interview, so you got to hang at the show. We're not going to. We're not going to put you on a plane and send you back. You got to come out and see some rock tonight. That would be awesome. All right, Daddy. We'll see you Thank tonight. You all. Your music has touched me in so. Hello, nice to meet you. Oh my God. <laughs> You're so cool. Right on. Let's <laughs> say. I love him. Ah! Hey! I'm at Maxwell! Hey, you! He was great. He held his side of the bargain. We, on the other hand, sucked. <laughs> Dreams come true. You get what you pray for. I felt the same way about all the people that I fell in love with. I mean, yeah. I think to a certain degree that's what Susie and the Banshees did for me at a time when, you know, I was 14 years old and I felt really ugly and horrible and and I used to put her records on and feel really empowered, so I can understand that. And then I, mm -hmm. then because I'd found music that I was that madly in love with, I felt I had a secret, so that when I went to school and all my peers kind of made me feel uncomfortable, I felt that I had a secret that made me, you know, just as cool as they were. They just didn't know how cool I was. You made an impression on him. I hope so. <laughs> made one on me. Thanks to Garbage, we got free tickets tonight to see them again. Thank you, MTV. Thanks, Garbage.